continue to study your word. May we continue to learn of you and to develop Christ-like characters learning at your feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello everyone and welcome back to part two of the covenant promises of God and today we're going to start with the Davidic covenant. The history of the city of Jerusalem is the focal point of all the world and the key city of three major world religions which is Judaism, Islam and Christianity. These are the three major religions that proclaim one God. Jerusalem is God's chosen city. We know that. When we study God's word, we see that Jerusalem is God's chosen city. That even the city, the new Jerusalem that God has promised us, all those who are faithful, we call it the new Jerusalem. It is going to rest right where the old Jerusalem was. We know Jerusalem is God's chosen city and it's the focal point of the three major Christianity. You will find Judaism led there, you will find Islamic there, and you're going to find Christianity there. Biblical prophecy proclaims that God will again reign from the city of Jerusalem. He will stand among Zion. If you read Zechariah 8, verses 1 to 23 in your spare time and Revelation 14, 1, we are going to see that. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord, when I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob. By the name God Almighty, but my name Jehovah was I not known to them. And I have established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage wherein they were strangers. So we know God never forgets the covenant he made with Abraham, right? And I also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant, the covenant that he with Abraham God is remembering it because it said unto his seeds forever and we have to trust that forever he will again give it to Abraham's seeds so let us continue the promise of the land I will bring you to the land which I swore to give to Abraham Isaac and Jacob And I will give it to you for possession. I am the Lord. They didn't possess the, the land, but God had made the promise. He's going, they're going, he's going to fulfill that promise. They are going to inherit that land. Let us look at the seven I will of God in Exodus chapter 6. Which is the promise of redemption. He said, I will bring you out I will free you I will redeem you the promise of adoption I will take you as my own and I will be your God the promise of the land I will bring you to the land I will give it to you so we see the promise of redemption, I will bring you out, I will free you. And he did free the Israelite. He did. He said, I will redeem you. And to those who are going to be blessed, because he, he made a promise to Abraham that I will bless them that bless you and curse them and curse you. He said that the, every generation is going to be blessed because of you. So now God is what? Given the promise of adoption, I will make you as my own. I will be your God. 
and he said, I will bring you to the land and I will give it to you. Let us read Psalms 105. Psalms 105, we're looking at verses 5 onward. Remember his marvelous works, his marvelous works that he had done, his wonders and the judgment of his mouth. All ye seeds of Abraham, his servants, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He had remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. And confirmed the same unto Jacob for a long. And to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying unto thee, Will I give thee the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance? And the new covenant, let's look at the new covenant. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with the fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was a husband unto them, said the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the whole house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them unto the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. What a wonderful God we serve. What a wonderful God we serve. So the first covenant reaches from the time it was ordained to the imminent and final in gathering of the 12 tribe as a kingdom. And yet, though never invalidated by God, its, val its validity has been persistently negated by the New Testament church and its sanctity violated by both the Old and New Testament churches until this very day so as the people failing their promise having broken god's commandment they thereby also have broken the covenant god made with their fathers because remember the promise is on condition of obedience we are to be obedient to god's laws we are to be obedient In the new covenant which the Lord is now about to fulfill, the commandment of God, unlike in the old, will not be written on tables of stone. Where is it going to be written? But in fleshy tables of the heart. And at that time shall all know the Lord from the least of them unto the greatest of them, says Jeremiah. So I don't have to tell you how to serve God. His laws are written upon your heart. You are going to serve God. You're going to know what you are to do. Just like before the law was written on tables, Adam knew what he had to do. Eve knew what she had to do. So we are again, after sin is going to be, remember sin is going to, not going to rise up again. So every man is going to know the Lord for himself. Every man will know the Lord for himself. So the new covenant promises with the house of Israel. Did we read that right? If we go back, if, if you remember that the new covenant, we read it in Jeremiah 31, 34. It was made with the house of Israel. I will put my law in their inward parts, write it in their hearts, will be their God. They shall be 
my people, they shall all know me. I will forgive their iniquity. I will remember their sins no more. I will know that heart that has been talked about here is the mind. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will place them and multiply them. I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. If we remember, God told Abraham, all the promises that come down, unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance, the land of promise. We're reading from early writings. We're looking at the, the gathering time, the book Early Writings. The Lord showed me that he had stretched out his hand a second time to recover the remnant of his people. And that effort must be redoubled in this gathering time. In the scattering, Israel was smitten and torn. But now in the gathering time, God will heal and bind his people. If we stop and we think for a bit, because remember the new covenant was made with whom? That's right, with the house of Israel. So inspiration is telling us here that God is going to stretch out his hand, that God is going to stretch out his hand a second time. So if he's going to stretch his hand a second time, it means he would have done that the first time to gather his people. And we know the first time he did that was with Israel taking them out of Egypt. That was the first gathering time. So in the scattering, Israel was smitten and torn. But now in the gathering time, God will heal and bind up his people. In the scattering efforts made to spread the truth had but little effect because they were scattered throughout the entire world. So it had little effect to accomplish but little or nothing. But in the gathering, when God has set his hand to gather his people, efforts to spread the truth will have their des designed effect. All should be united and zealous in the work. I saw that it was wrong for any to refer to the scattering, for example, to govern us now in the gathering. For if God should do no more for us now than he did, then Israel would never be gathered. And all throughout the Bible, all throughout inspiration, the spirit of prophecy, as we read, we and study, we see that God is about to do something miraculous with his people. He's about to do something miraculous. The efforts used for the gathering, we can't look to that for an example, inspiration says. God is going to do something marvelous. We just have to make sure that we are part of it. Micah 7, 18 to 20 says, Who is a God like unto thee, that pardoneth iniquity and parseth by the generation of the remnant of his heritage? He retained not his anger forever because he delighted in mercy. We serve a merciful God. We can admit that. As we would have been wiped out already. God is merciful to us. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. And thou will guard us. He will cast all the sins into the depths of the sea. Thou will perform the truth to Jacob. And the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers, and from the days of old. Ezekiel tells us, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, said the Lord God. God is pleading with us. So for modern Israel, Prophet and King tells us that which God purposed to do for the world through Israel, the chosen nation, he will finally accomplish through his church and her today. God has a church in her today.
She has let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, even to his covenant-keeping people, who faithfully render him the fruits in their season. Never has the Lord been without true representative on this earth who have made his interests their own. These witnesses for God are numbered among the spiritual Israel, and to them will be fulfilled all the covenant promises made by Jehovah to his ancient people. So all the covenant promises that was made to God ancient people, giving them the land forever. I'm asking you to go back and listen to the video, the study on Eden. And you will see that that promised land, that wonderful promised land, Eden is there, is where Eden is going to be. Back to Jerusalem is where we are going. It says, these witnesses for God are numbered among spiritual Israel, who calls themselves spiritual Israel today. And God said what? All the promises made with ancient Israel, he had made, they are going to be fulfilled with spiritual Israel. I'm reading from the same book, Prophet and Kings, right? Page 22 this time. Of special value to God's church on earth today. Does God have a church in earth? He does. The keepers of his vineyard are the messages of counsel and admonition given through the prophets who have made plain his eternal purpose in behalf of mankind. Because remember the Lord says, I will do nothing except I reveal my secrets to the servants of prophets. In the teaching of the prophets, his love for the lost race and his plan for their salvation are clearly revealed. The story of Israel's call, of the successes and failures of their restoration to divine favor, of the rejection of the master of the vineyard and of the carrying out of the plan of all the ages by a godly remnant to whom are to be fulfilled all the covenant promises. So the remnant of Israel, all these covenant promises are going to be fulfilled with them. There has been the team of God's messengers to his church throughout the centuries that has passed. Study. It's about his people. It's about the ret returning to the land. For centuries, all the promises that were made, God sticks behind all his promises and he does not alter the words that comes out of his mouth. What he says, that will he do. And we have to trust that. We have to trust God. Even when we don't see things are working out. Even when we don't see it working out, we have to trust God. He is God. So the everlasting covenant and the law. First with Adam. It was first written on his heart by God. It was renewed by Noah. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob renewed to them by God as well. Moses renewed to him by God, written in stone. Ancient Israel renewed to them by God. David renewed to him by God. Modern Israel today renewed and written on their hearts. I want the love of God to be written on my heart. I want to be triumphant. I want to be saved. I want to go back to the land that God has promised. All the promises he has made to, to ancient Israel, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to, that was renewed with the seed. And that is why in Revelation chapter 7 and Revelation 14, he talks about the 144,000 or Israel because all throughout as we read this has been the team of all the prophets Adam and all the saved receives the promise blessing of the everlasting covenant in conclusion we are going to look 
at ancient time versus modern time. In Genesis 13, 14 to 15 says, Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward, southward, east and west. For all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it to thee and thy seeds forever. So God tell no um, Abraham to look north, south, east and west as far as his eye can see. All of it is going to be given to him and his seeds. Abraham didn't live to see that. But does God promise fail? He said no. Modern, look at modern time. Daniel 2.44 and in the days of this king shall what? The God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left. The kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. That same, it's in that same place. Let's continue. Ancient time versus modern time, Genesis 13:16. I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. This is a promise made to Abraham. But in modern times, God is going to have that fulfilled. Where? In Revelation 7, 9. When God say after this, after the sealing of the 144,000, I beheld and know a great what? Multitude, which no man can number. This is the promise being fulfilled. That is going to be fulfilled. That was promised since Abraham's time. All nation, all kindred, all people, all tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hand. They have promised that I will make your seed as the dust of the earth, that nobody can number them. If they could number the dust, they could number them. Then God saying what? In Revelation 7 9 that there is a great multitude that no man can number here is a promise being fulfilled remember we just read that all the promises made to ancient Israel modern Israel spiritual Israel today is the one that is going to benefit who's going to receive all the promises promise tree I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seeds after thee in their generation for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. I want to listen to Revelation 14. It says, What? And I look and lo, him, Lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty four thousand, having his father's name written in their forehead, as in written in their mind. They know God, God has established his covenant and God is going to fall through that he never goes back on his promises. Ancient time versus modern times, in thy seed shall all the nation of the earth be blessed. And in, in a modern time it's saying this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world for witness one, unto all nations and then shall you come. Indeed, all nation is going to be blessed. We continue prophet and kings. Let Israel hope in God. The master of the vineyard is even now gathering from among men of all nations and people the precious fruits for which he has long been waiting. Soon he will come unto his own, and in the glad day his eternal purpose for the house of Israel will finally be fulfilled. He shall cause them that come of Jacob to take root. Israel shall blossom and bud and fill the face of the world with fruit. We must have an increase of faith as we cannot be renewed in the divine image and love and obey the requirements of God. We can hear that singing all the time in order for us to be sanctified we have to love and obey the truth we have to obey live out the principles of god in our daily life let the prayer go forth from unfeigned lips lord increase my faith 
Give me divine enlightenment, for without help from thee, I can do nothing. Come in humility and bow before God. Open before the Lord your Bibles, containing the divine promises. Take your position upon them. Make a covenant with God that you will answer his requirements. Tell him you, you will believe without any other evidence except the naked promise. So you read in the promise that God has promised to give Abraham that land. Even now, take hold of that promise. Take hold of it. Come boldly before the throne of grace in humility. And take hold of the divine promises. Read them. Claim them, brethren. You can't do this on your own. Say, Lord, help me to claim these promises. We were told to make a covenant with God. Let us make a covenant that we are not going to break. All the help is there. Angels are there to assist us. If you read the book, Truths About Angel, you see that angels are there to assist us. God has not left us by ourselves. Not because we don't see. God has assigned an angel to every one who has come into his work. Everyone who has accepted him. Trust God. As the reading says, all he sees the promise that this is what God says he's going to do, even if you don't see any evidence that it is shaping up, believe it. It is going to happen. So with that thought, let us have a closing word of prayer. Our oh, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for everything that you have done. We ask all that you continue to guide and protect us. Keep us in all our ways in Jesus' name.